Hello, Dilroyd. Bonjour. Hola. And you are very welcome into the study hub today for what I cannot believe is episode eight of this series for 2024. This is our final instalment today, so we better go out of the bang because it is our last episode. Now, because it is, of course, we had to do maths with our old buddy, Gene Kelly. So it's maths ordinary level paper two. I'm the operator with my pocket calculator. We won't make you sing that, Gene, but that's craft work there in Pocket Calculator, and that's actually our math song today. But by a classic German group. I wonder why we're emphasising a German group. There may be a hint there. But before all that, we are going to go back in time and we wrap our heads around history and when it comes to history. Well, that is going to be your earworm for today. And then, you know that German hint I gave you? Well, if I look down the studio here, I see another good pal of ours. Helmut Sundermann from St. Killian's Deutsche Schule is here to give us the lowdown on the German exam. Now, Helmut told me yesterday that he thinks we first met maybe 20 years ago on another exam programme far, 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 far away. Which must mean we really know what we're talking about is what I'm taking from that. But you might be thinking like Florentina there and have a listen to this and see if this song might apply to you. Florentina there saying, Ich hab genug, I've had enough, but stay with us. We haven't had enough. We've got great material for you. So now that we've got the engine up and running here in Study Hub, we're going to start with the real upper, as they say. Maths paper two. Uh, we couldn't leave the season really without you back in your chair there. Jean <laughs> Kelly from the Institute of Education is with us. Her TikTok video on Maths Ordinary Paper Level 1 has had over 105,000 views already in climbing. In fact, we've already broken our 1 million views record on TikTok. So there you go. So the irrepressible Jean is back with us to look at this paper. Jean, we're going to start with that overview that we always do for paper two. And I know you're going to tell me the topics bleed into each other. But just in terms of people having some sort of a menu for this paper, no problem. talk us through what you, what you um, have in mind. So paper two is full of formulae. Every topic, you can literally go to the log tables and pick a formula for some Log tables. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. We'll be talking um, about them. You've got the line. Mm-hmm. You've got the circle. They're both coordinate geometry. You've got area and volume, trigonometry, geometry, transformations, probability and statistics. And two sections. There's two sections. There's a short um, short question section and a long question section. The section A, the short questions are 30 marks each. There's six of them. You have to do five. And the section B are long questions. There's four of them. You have to do three. Now, one of the problems is students always lean towards certain subjects and topics. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me nowadays, right, they're all mixed up. How does that help or assist a student who's kind of like, I'm good at this, but not good at this? You know, and we all have yeah. things we like, don't we? Well, looking at the papers down through, since Project Math started, like in around 2010, um, there's always been a question on the line, a question on the circle, a question on tree. Why? <sighs> they what? Just such good foundations? It's, yeah, because yeah. you need it for everything. Okay. You need it for everything. It bleeds into all the other topics. So know those and backwards. Hammer absolutely. Them. 100%. And area and volume. I mean, like you've been doing the line since junior cycle. You've been in trigonometry since junior cycle. You've been even now you're doing probability. You're doing statistics like all the topics on paper too, even area and volume. They're all from the junior cycle. So it's it's not really a big stretch in the Leaving Cert Ordinary over junior cycle uh, honours. So they're roughly on par. Okay. So the stuff you did for, for the junior cycle, just keep going back over it because you'll see it coming up again. So if you're saying, right, you're giving me the confidence for that, but short questions, they're a joy because they're short, yeah. but that means they have to be right, yes. you know, and it's state this, list this, that kind of thing. How, yeah. do, you, how do you plan for um, that? Just keep drilling thing? away at examples. I, I keep telling my students to do at least two exam paper questions every single day. Are you and serious? If get, yeah. What, 11 weeks to go and you say that's yeah. the way to do Absolutely. it? Okay. 100%. Like if there's 11 weeks to go in terms of your study plans, like, you know, to get stuck into a good routine. Yeah. Um, I'd be doing half an hour a day and I'd be doing that seven days a week. And in that half an hour, you could do maybe 
one or two long questions if you can get a chance because you've got the solutions online mm-hmm. um, and maybe two short questions. So maybe one or two long questions and two short questions get stuck into them. Um, I'd be doing that every day in terms of the 11 weeks like over the two papers. There's there's 14 topics. OK, so you'd probably have to double up on a few of them for the first couple of weeks, like okay. maybe do algebra, complex numbers yeah, together. Yeah, just to get those you know, done. Yeah, yeah sure. you could do calculus and functions and graphs together. Um, in, in terms of paper two, you could do maybe trigonometry and geometry together. Now, not too many people like the geometry now, section. Now, I was about to say that. Look, you know that yeah. we're hounded every year with what can I leave out, what can I leave out? Yeah. Which is pro- probably <laughs> part of the project math's thinking is, you know, to get away from yeah. that idea of it. This but is geometry it. is the one that people, what, what is it? Why are they daunted They by just it? don't like theorems. They think it's beyond them. But like for ordinary level, there's no proofs. So you don't have to prove anything. OK. You just have to learn off like a definition. You just have to learn off like all three angles in a triangle add up to give 180 degrees. They know that. They think they don't, but they do. OK. So there's certain um, definitions that you just need to learn. And they're your theorems. There's literally only 20 definitions. Just learn them off. That's it. And they'll ask, they'll ask you questions on it. Like, for example, there's a question on trigonometry on the sample paper that was given out by the department where there was a woman called Gráinne. She was in a kayak. Oh, I love Gráinne you know kayak. Yeah. <laughs> kayak. OK, so Gráinne so still in her off. kayak. She's still she's in the kayak. a year now in the yeah. kayak. OK, so go on, talk us through this. Um, this was a great so example. So she's on one side of a river. Yep. And she needs to get to the other side. Yep. And there's two exits. So she can take one route, which is against the current. And she can take another route, which is with the current. Right. Um, If she gets out, it's say, if she goes against the current, it might be faster. Right. But does she want to get out at that exit? If she takes the longer route, which is with the current. Yeah. She might have had her car parked there. So maybe it might be easier for (laughs) her to get out there. But we don't know this. Okay. Um, So like the first thing they asked was because the two banks the river banks are parallel and they mentioned that in the question okay uh, when you know for a reason parallel, right? yeah. yeah yeah no matter which way she crosses that's a transverse line mm-hmm. so therefore there are angles in between that you can find called alternate angles okay. the z shape everybody knows them mm-hmm. as so if you recognize that then that's your theorem alternate angles are if they're you know, they're equal. But let's so, go back for a second. You're saying every word in the question matters, like parallel is mentioned in the question. There's yes, your hint, right? Look out for the keywords, big time. Do you do that with your students? Like Absolutely. out with a pen and keywords. constantly looking for those Underline keywords? Underline the keywords. Because the, the questions are parallel. written really carefully. Absolutely. And they're not using big flowery English anymore, I've noticed. So like it's it's nice, simple English. And plus, even the wordy questions, even the problem solving questions, mm. there there's less words in them. OK, so it's getting more refined. It's getting yeah. more refined. Yeah. Timings then during exam paper two. It's a two and a half hour exam. How am yeah. I how am I chopping up my clock and my time? Well, you see, both sections A and B are worth 150 marks each. So you really kind of should be sp- spending the same amount of time on each because they're worth the same amount. Yeah. Um, if I was and yet I feel section question, B will take me longer. Right. That's the kind of the view. But it doesn't because there's less questions to do. OK, now. In section A, if you're doing the short questions, you have to do, there's six of them, you have to do five. Now, the good students will probably do every question on the paper anyway. But... Um, They'd have time to do that? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, generally, what I would say is, if it's 30 marks, spend half the marks in time doing the question. So spend 15 minutes on the on the short questions. Okay. Now, that's a great rule of thumb. I, actually, yeah, yeah, half the marks, that's it. And if it's a long question, section B... They're 50 mark questions, so spend half the marks in time doing the question. So 25 minutes. Now, that will only get you the exact required questions that you need to do. So if you want to do all the questions, because good students, if they're going for an O1, they definitely try to do all of them and get out after an hour and a half. But yeah. uh, don't do that. <laughs> Stay there till the bitter end. Really? But Just keep absolutely. going. You, okay. If you walk out and you think about something, you can't walk back in. Yes. Do you know? So once once you're out, you look you're sad out. there. You exactly. have a sad yeah, face. Yeah, it annoys me though as that. well. It's like please stay in. Like there. where are you please going? Stay in you know, until the bitter yeah. end. Yeah. You know, um, but if you are wanting to do all the questions, mm-hmm. spend ten minutes on each short question and spend 20 minutes on each long question and you'll have enough time. You'll even have 10 minutes left over to look over everything. Now, you said about paper one in ordinary level mm. maths that the approach is to get more practical. Is this kind of the case as well? This idea of the real world Absolutely. appearing on the paper? Yeah. Talk us through that yeah. then and what, that, what, well, like, what they're trying to peel back with this. They're trying to get us, first of all, to read through word problems and to solve mathematical problems with equations. So come up with our own equations when we're reading the questions. And there isn't a lot of that mm-hmm. as such on the ordinary level, but there's still a little bit of it. And it mm-hmm. kind of scares the students a little bit. 
But um, again, underline the keywords. There's always the same concept going through every question. Um, in terms of paper two, it's very practical based because like if you wanted, let's say, for example, I don't know, like area and volume, right? right. If you wanted to say the spire in O'Connell Street, you wanted yes. to paint it bright pink, yes. right? You'd have to get the curved surface area. It's a cone. Find out what the area is. See how many litres of paint are in a tin. See how many paint tins you yes. need and to cover the cover the whole thing. And then you'd have to cost it up. So it's bringing in financial mats off paper two, off paper one onto paper two. So it, it is quite practical. And you have to get permission from Dublin City Council. Of course. <laughs> that mightn't come in by the end of the exam. Like the Trump election statistics, talk us through those kind of things that can come up. Do you know what? Inferential statistics has come up every single year. Ding, 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 ding. Literally ding, ding, every ding, ding. single year. Really? Why? They like it. Since 2015. It's very important. Uh, it's a dodgy part of statistics because like, I know when when Trump was getting elected back in 2016 and he was up against Hillary Clinton. Yes. And people were asked on the way out, like a little opinion poll or whatever. They were asked, who'd you vote for? Mm -hmm. Everybody said Hillary. Mm -hmm. Yet Trump got in. Mm -hmm. So off those little sample of people that were walking out. Yeah. Not obviously not everybody comes out to vote anyway, but from the sample Mm. that they took that were walking out. It was looking great for Clinton. It was looking great for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Everybody thought she was going to win. Mm. And then all of a sudden Trump gets in. So inferential statistics is about taking the information from a sample, a small group yes. and predicting what would happen for the entire population from it. And it's dodgy, but it's come up every year. It's well, come up every year since 2015. We get hours here on Radio 1 from <laughs> those samples. Long, long may they live. Now, so trigonometry, we've talked about that. But the big thing for you is that there's formula everywhere. And I know we laugh Absolutely. at the logbooks, but you have, yes. like, you're obsessed with the logbooks and you're I right. Really it's your am. Ulysses, yeah. you know. As at least but, you have something to fall back on. Like students always, I know from my own mocks this year, a lot of students left blanks in certain parts of the paper. And the correctors Why? were going back. Just the, as, as opposed to giving the lash. They weren't prepared enough. They should really give it a lash though. That's the thing. Just attempt it. Can you lose marks something. if it's wrong? Um, it's oh, not that you lose pause, marks. It's not oh negatively marked. But yeah. if you're making the right attempt and you're doing it right, okay. you're using the right formula, yes. you'll get the attempt marks. But the problem is people always forget, look, I could take a formula from the log tables, write it down on the paper. I don't even have to sub into it. And technically, I could get four marks out of 10. Now, four out of 10 is 40 percent. And you're passing the question for writing without even subbing into it. Yes, for writing exactly what's in front of you down on the piece of paper. It's a bit like the quote for Hamlet or whatever, you know, just stick it down. Eat the exam papers. I love that. Eat them alive, literally from now on. Because Project Maths, we some of us think it's new. It's not new. (laughs) It's 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 around 2010, is it? Yeah. So yeah. you have a huge amount of material Big there time. to work off. And plus in 22 and in 23, there was two papers because there was two leaving certs. There was a deferred paper in both. There was mm-hmm. one in June and one in July. Mm-hmm. So you've got the guts of about 14, 15 papers that you could go through. The trapezoidal rule. Trapezoidal rule, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that one. Uh, comes up almost every second year, you say. Yeah. Talk us up. through that. Right. So it came up last year. And trapezoidal rule is area and volume. That's supposed to be paper two. But it can come up on paper one as well. And it shook people uh, a couple of years ago when it came up on paper one. They just weren't ready for so it. So they're entitled to put in paper one. But Absolutely. the students just assumed yes. it was a paper two topic. Yeah. So and we had this with Because there's a weekend yeah. in between, you see. Right. So they're studying paper one topics for Friday and then they have the weekend to study for paper two on Monday. Yes. So they just left their in volume alone thinking it wasn't going to be on paper one. And then all of a sudden there's the trapezoidal rule. And they're fully entitled to coverage on the curriculum, yes. right? Yeah. So get this siloed thing out of your head that it's all one yeah. Area and even within one. one question, you can mix topics. Like I did a question there a couple of weeks ago. It had calculus. It had functions. It had graphs. It had the line. It also had algebra and it had financial maths in one question. But you're a dose, aren't you? No. <laughs> Say dose or dose. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it might be a dose. All right. <laughs> Listen, last piece of advice for students. Don't panic. Just go in, attempt. Don't leave until the bitter end. And literally write down any formula you can find. <laughs> Try your best. And within the next 11 weeks, just do a topic a week, maybe double up for the first few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're studying, study topics that come up together, like study trigonometry with geometry. OK, study, pair them. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Study the line and the circle together. Mm. Study probability and statistics together. OK. Do you know, just group them together. Those kind of natural bed. Absolutely. Policy. That sounds like a winning formula to me, yeah. Jean. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Listen, you're here for the humour. Thank you so much, Jean Kelly, for joining us with that.
Ah, uh, the old quote, may you live in interesting times. A phrase that's either a Chinese curse or a quote from the British statesman uh, Joseph Chamberlain, the one who opposed Home Rule for Ireland or something from an American politician in 1939. But this is where the historian comes in. You research, you get multiple primary sources and then you draw your conclusion. And this is our very convoluted segue into the history paper with our teacher for history today, Sean Delap, principal of D. Scott and former history teacher, but... Still knows That's his onions, I think. Every now and then, yeah. Still knows his onions on history. <laughs> Sean, the history paper, of course, has changed a little bit since COVID times, but stable enough since last year. So just talk us through that format, the sections and duration, must Ali. Yeah, but what they have to do is, uh, it's a two hour, 50 minute exam and they have to do three essays and one document study question within that. Um, the three essays pre-COVID would have been taken from three different sections but now you have an option of doubling up on one section. So that choice has stayed. Yeah, it which depends. It's generous, on, you know. It, it is generous, but it depends on which way you approach it. Some students may have decided, you know, to go for broke and leave a section out. I uh, wouldn't be a great fan of that myself. I think you should try and cover as much and then have That is the, an approach, though. I mean, we get that in, you know, well, and, and it depends, it depends and on how far back you are, you yep. know, and it could be a sensible enough one if you've if you haven't had a, a great deal of time. I think the best approach there would be if you, if you covered your, your three sections and if there's one section that's a little bit difficult, you have the option of avoiding it, which you wouldn't have had pre-COVID. Um, and picking the chances of, um, you know, being able to pick three nice questions has increased. Oh, my there, nice so. strategy. Now, the document question, obviously. Let's document talk about question, that. Yeah, the document question, there's a choice of three case studies. And what I would say here is, you know, Jean was talking there about looking back over exam papers, and that's very, very important. Yeah. There's three case studies. One of them is going to come up. And don't be looking back maybe and trying to second guess which one of them is going to come up and which one didn't come up the last time it was on. They changed the document. I said looking for the gap. This every, hasn't come up. Yeah, so it every, come every up. two years. Because the problem okay. with the document study is there's no choice. And <gasps> if you leave one out and it doesn't come up, you're sunk. So, so if you've decided in your study room, oh, I'm yeah, sure this it's one this. hasn't been up, you know, the last yeah, yeah. time because they, they do Sean a two, says, they do whatever. a two year run. So you'd say, oh well, this one wasn't on the last time. It's like Sudden Dale or whatever. Right? Yeah, they could be real. Well, they're on European history this year. It could be for very good reasons that maybe they didn't have enough um, uh, cartoon material or document material for it, and they may. Yeah, you practical know, reason same, why, right? The same thing could run again. And I think it will unnerve you a little bit maybe in the night before the exam that, you know, you might be a bit more relaxed about it further yeah. out from the exam. Yes, and, and then, then the, the night, night before. before. You go, God, if this comes up, you know. And, because you're, and, you're boxed in. It, you're boxed in. And really, the doc, there's not an awful lot to study. And there's, there's three case studies there, the show trials, uh, the, the Jarrow March and the Nuremberg trials. There's not an awful lot in them. Uh, so, you know, cover all three well. Uh, and, just do yourself and you that favour like yeah. you, you could get away with the first two sections without really having studied the case study the answers are in the documents in front of you yes um, now there's, there's four sections to the document study and it gets a little bit harder as you move through it the first is comprehension and it is a reading comprehension the answer is there and it's a one uh, it's a it's a one sentence answer. It is what it That's is. Stop it complicating is. it. And, yeah. And just read your read the question twice because there there's sometimes people make mistakes. I remember one one of the ones where they asked on um, it was on the Martin Luther uh, the uh, the boycott one oh, yeah. uh, when it was on a number of years ago and they asked a question on um, who travelled on the earliest bus. Uh, and I remember someone wrote down um, the, the workers travelled on the early okay. are um, the, the the black workers uh, travelled on the early bus, but it was actually black domestic workers. It was and leaving the word domestic very out, specific. You lost all marks, so oh. it's either right or it's wrong. So just be careful, read it a second time. Just make sure that you understand what the question is about. It's very easy. It should be really that's twenty marks out of a hundred. Should be very easy to get. Second part of it's based on comparison. We're going to ask you to compare the type of information or the type of sources. Okay. So what I would say when you're doing your comparison, um, you know, take two examples from source A and take two examples from source B. You know. Compare them uh, equally. Um, third part of the question is on criticism. And this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. So probably asking you to look a little bit more about the type of source, the usefulness of the source. So prepare things like... So what are they looking for in that? Well, well, for, say, if it, if, say if it was a cartoon and they may ask you what's the, the, the strengths and weaknesses of a political cartoon. Like give us an example. Yeah, of the strength of a political cartoon would be that it, it gives you the viewpoint of the time. You know, like something that Martin Turner would do yeah. uh, maybe today on uh, Leo Varadkar's resignation or something. Yeah. But these would be taken from the case studies that they, they have here. So think so about the advantage it it's a, prime, it's a primary a story. source and the weakness of it would be that 
there's not a lot of information in them. They don't give the background information. Cartoon will be quick. That's a, that's a point it'll you be, can write down. It would be, it'll be smart. And you always refer to the wow. cartoon that's in front of you. Okay. You say, in this case, but it doesn't give the background background information on it, you know. A lot of the things that you can do with whatever source you get, um, if it's be it a written document, be it a cartoon, they'll all have a date on it. And you can say that, uh, it's got a date in it and that immediately allows you to put it into historical context which is telling you where along the storyline this fits in um, and you know and you will follow that up by saying in this yes. case so if it was something on, on, on the Jarrow March you would look at it was this document published during the Jarrow March was it published before or was it published after and that might colour your view you view so the on date it. You know, really look, unlocks it. It would be like if you looked at something maybe on the, on the Jarrow March before it started, uh, there probably would be, could be quite upbeat. Uh, look at something after it, they're probably a little bit the opposite way. <laughs> it hasn't way gone so it, well. It hasn't, it hasn't gone so well for them, you know. Uh, and the last part of the document study is a mini essay. It's um, basically, you should write about a page and a half. And what are they and looking it for be, there? Oh, well, it's very, going to be very specific to the, to the yeah. topic. An awful lot of it will be based around uh, causes uh, our our impact okay and don't be messing around with putting in a lot of background you don't have the time look very very careful i think Jean mentioned this too the key word is really really important here so this evaluate if it's, if, or impact if, it, if, if it's impact it's what comes after and start with the impact you know yeah uh, you won't have the time to just to, to have some kind of an intro on it or anything like that moving on to section two then questions about ireland worth about 100 marks you have five options you answer one of them what can you expect here and how do you structure your time well what you have in every section you do you have four options four essays okay. and that would be the same with with with, with your european and and your 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 uh, your irish history now for your essay sections whether it's europe uh, or, or ireland when you you know look at the options there pick the pick the best one that suits you and then you do three things with your essay. Okay. And this will work for Irish or European history. Check the dates. Okay. In the question. Yeah. If there are dates in the question and stick. Give stick, me an stick example. Them. Well, I could ask you something like, um, you know, how successful uh, was the de Valera government between 1932 and 1939? Very, very specific. Stop talking about 1925 okay. or 1930. But, but then yeah. you could have another one where there isn't a date written in the question, but you can work the date out. Um how successful was Mussolini as leader of Italy? Okay, so well, you look at his reign. Right. But I remember when that came up on, on the Leaving Cert quite a number of years ago, an awful lot of people made a complete hames of it because because they wrote about his rise to power. Because they just saw Mussolini and, was, and went yeah, for and it. And they just saw the word Mussolini. <laughs> They're out of the traps. Everything they knew uh, about like, him. Like, like a greyhound. Yeah. And they just threw everything they knew about it. Now, for the history essays... So there's hidden you, dates in you that have, language. You have two breakdowns. In the, you have 60% of the marks out of 100 for... 60 marks out of 100 for your, for your information. Yeah. Now... They will allow 12 marks for background information. Right. But that's it. Yeah. And I'm know. giving them so, pages and, you, you, and pages you, of it. If like. you're given pages and pages of it, sometimes, you know, when you used to go in to look at their scripts after they after the correction yeah. was done and they just say, look at it here. Uh, I I've, written, I've written three pages and all <laughs> I got was 12 and immediately said they didn't answer the question. Didn't answer the uh, question. You know, it might, have been, an, it might have been an impact and they're writing everything that came before and all they can get is a maximum. Um, of 12 marks there so just bear that in mind the other thing that I would say then you have 40% of the marks for the for your, your, your ability to analyse so I would look at the dates uh, and the next thing you need to look at is the parts is it a one part or two part question why two part two part questions you need to answer both parts okay. if it's a two part question you will lose marks uh, if you if you because they can only give you certain if you completely you ignore a section, ig- ignore yeah. a part so yeah. a two part question could be uh, how well did the common and Ale government deal with the economy and foreign affairs so you'd have two two clear parts there but the beauty about it is you do not need to answer the the question half and half as long as you address both parts somewhere along the Seriously? line you're fine it's yeah. not 50 so so no it's not so you I could, would think you, you could have be, to you would and that's and that's where equal. a lot of people make the mistake huh. so you could be going along. Um, you know, handy enough with the economy and then you look at your watch and you say, God, I've only five minutes mm-hmm. left. I'm in trouble here. Haven't done the second. Move on to the second part. Just get a paragraph in and you're Stick fine. Down yeah. If over. you don't, you would be limited to uh, a maximum of 50 out of 60 for information, which is not too bad. Mm. But you could probably on the 40 or sort of down to 21 out of 40. Oh. So you're getting a maximum there of 71%. Uh, whereas if you just throw in one paragraph in the other part, 
uh, you're okay. And the third thing that you need to do with your essay is the key word. And again, Jean was mentioning that in the maths. Yeah. That's, you know, that, that's coming. It, it's something it could be if it's impact, causes, consequences. If it's causes and consequences, every point you make, every paragraph has to either start with a cause or a consequence. But just have it in and, your head. That's yeah, the and just, just underline it. And for a split second before you start writing your next paragraph, ask yourself, am I writing about a cause or a consequence? Uh, and if I'm not, don't do it. How much yeah. am I writing? Because we always get this from students. Well, writing, I suppose, you, you, it, it depends. And it's very, very hard to say because some people have massive big writing and others others have And you, less. you have to pack it but with it, information, yeah, don't you? You know, you, well. the, the examiner is uh, can give you a mark on every point you make on, on a scale of 0 to 12. OK. OK. Um, so five perfect points would give you full marks. Never seen it done. Um See, some questions, if you're putting in a lot of statistical information on that and saying mm-hmm. a question that we based on maybe the economy, your marks your marks will tot up very, very quickly. Nice. Others, yeah. you need to maybe discuss it a little bit more. You're sort of dragging the guts out of it a little bit yes. to, to get those marks. So it can be down to the type of question you choose. So how do you, you study, well. you know, Gina, talking about the 11 weeks, like how do you break down that course? Because, I mean, I hear you, but there's a lot. There is there is a lot in it. And I think you just look at, um, I would be looking at exam papers constantly now. You know, and that's what I would be going over. And, you know, you'll, you'll have a ch- every section when you're revising a section. Um, look at your exam papers. You have a choice of four questions. Uh, you don't need to be able to do the four. If you go back over the exam papers and every time you can do at least one, you're ready. Really? And that's the way I would do it. It's not going to be much different. than, And of course, if you've covered all sections, you've got the added advantage since COVID that you can you can ditch one and double up on another. You know, so. Um, that's the way I would approach I think that the most important book you should have out in front of you at the moment now is the past exam papers and study through past questions and if you come across one that there's that's a little bit tricky now is the time to go and ask your teacher uh, and you know teachers will be very very glad to help you they'll, mm. they'll mm. you know they'll applaud your initiative <laughs> and um, you know if you see I was going back over the exam papers I've seen this little thing here I'm not too sure how I would handle that what would you advise you know, so don't 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 leave any stone unturned. And the language in the question, that's what you're really having. The language is well. very, very important, important in, in the question and watching your timing as well. You know, you're 40 minutes. Well, that's for the your, big thing about history. Is that, your, you know, we're doing maths, yeah. the maths paper flying along history. Like ah, they go in like is, nervous, yeah, yeah, yeah. ready to go. You have to be quick. You know, so it's 40 minutes really for your uh, saying, um, I'd say about three quarters of an hour for the document study. If you move on and, and you start. literally leave like a sentence hanging time wise, like, are you penalised for it? Are you better to just move on to the next? One. I would even if you come, you know what I would say if you've if you've moved on and even at the end of your, your your exam, I would leave a little gap at the bottom of every question. And as Jean was talking about in the relation to the maths, never walk out early. The mark is cumulative here. Yeah. So you know they'll keep giving you yeah, marks yeah. and but keep uh, looking yeah, for them. Yeah, and the mark out of forty for the way you discuss it. If there's a lot of information, that's gonna have that's gonna help you there 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 um, as well. And you know they'll they'll correct everything. So just even put short sentences down. I wouldn't recommend really bullet points mm, try uh, if you're running out of time sentence, because yeah. you must remember that there's two sets of marks: one for information and one yes. for discussion. Bullet points you're not really discussing. No. So what I would do is I'd get a point, write two sentences, and I'd get another point, write. Two sentences and I would keep doing that till the examiner pulls the paper from under me. And that's the way that's the way we go about it. Oh, that's when I get the shiver down the spine. Shut up, Gramil Moggs is shin. We turn to Helmut Sunderman. You are next. Hello. One of the wonderful teachers at St. Killian's School in Klonsky in Dublin. Helmut will come in inside the study hub. Uh, now, of course, the German paper, like so many of the language papers, a wide range of elements to it. We've got the oral, we've got the written, we've got the listening comprehension section. Indeed, yeah. So just start that overview of the paper and all the different elements, all the different parts of it, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, two parts. The oral is coming up now, I think, uh, on the weekend. Uh, and it's uh, 100 marks. Uh, I'm sure all the students are very busy preparing for it. Uh, <laughs> the oral has three parts. Uh, a general conversation part, which carries the most mark, 40 marks out of the 100. And then uh, an option to do either the picture stories or the project. Mm-hmm. And then finally a role play. And uh, the changes uh, from after the COVID still stand. There used to be five role plays and five picture stories, but it's now reduced to three that the school can choose. So uh, that should make it easy, I think, for the students. 
And so, yep. uh, it's the one part that they can really prepare for very well. So I would, you, you know, really say this is the one that I would work for the hardest and prepare because you know what's coming up and you can prepare very specifically for it. Now, you want to highlight this to the students that, you know, this thing about it being an exam, try and see it as a conversation. What you're trying to do is engage the examiner to prove that you can have a conversation rather than being a technical exercise. Is that fair? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, they're bound to be nervous. Uh, but obviously, when you go into an oral examination, uh, the key thing is that you are open, that you communicate and that you speak. And I think there are loads of different criteria uh, for marking the student. But I think the main one that uh, the examiners are looking out for is the fluency aspect. So uh, uh, try, you, you know, even if you're nervous, but, but try to come in and speak. And maybe you can prepare yourself uh, a little bit. In the general conversation, uh, there are seven topics. Maybe you think a little bit about, you know, what could I say about uh, mein Wohnort, meine Familie, uh, Schule, uh, uh, Beruf und Zukunft. Uh, just one or two things that uh, are coming up and be ready. When the cue comes to you and the ball is played into your field, yes. pick it up and play it. Yeah, and I think it should be natural. Uh, uh, so I wouldn't recommend learning off uh, uh, long passages, but I would prepare myself mentally for it and have nice vocabulary ready and prepare what I'm going to say. But you have to have your ears open as well. And real communication means that you listen, mm -hmm. you look at the examiner. It's a, it is a conversation because if you freeze up and you only concentrate on yourself, then uh, it, it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. And the other tip we got you know, from Spanish and French was this thing of have phrases ready for if you don't understand a question. Don't just sit oh, there and panic. Yes, indeed. Make it really, hit me yeah. up. Give me two or, th two, or th two or three things students could say. Entschuldigung, this können Sie das wiederholen? Ich habe das nicht verstanden. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, can, this, that's the main one. Be yeah. ready. It's a little thing. Be ready, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, danke schön. Wie geht's? Uh, you, you know, uh, das stimmt. The famous one, genau. I don't know if that could come in, but a lot of yeah. <laughs> people who don't know German, ja, das stimmt. Yeah. Uh, give little reactions. I think that's uh, important. Uh, I find adverbs very important in word order. Uh, like, uh, unfortunately, it's such a simple word, leider. Uh, you know, uh, keep using that. Uh, so, well, if you if, if they come to the topic of Freizeit or something, uh, you know, uh, was machst du in deiner Freizeit? Uh, ja, ich spiele Fußball, aber leider kann ich jetzt nicht viel Fußball spielen, weil ich viel uh, für meine Prüfungen lernen muss. Uh, it gives you another thought, yeah, uh, another and part it gives, it to the answer. good word order, and I love uh, the adverbs of frequency, like oft, manchmal, nie. Uh, uh, you know, particularly when you're talking about uh, pastimes and things like that. Yeah. You know, don't just say one thing, but say, yeah, uh, uh, ich bin sehr sportlich. Meistens am Wochenende uh, gehe ich ins Fitnessstudio und trainiere, aber manchmal uh, fahre ich sich ein bisschen und uh, uh, treffe mich mit meinen Freunden in Don Drum und wir gehen ins Kino oder in ein Eiscafé or something like that. So, sehr gut, H1. H1, I'm not sure. Let's move on to the written paper. You say that once students have read through, they should start the reading comprehensions because you want them to start getting marks into the bag. Yeah, um, uh, th th there was a talk there about walking out of an exam before it's finished. I don't think you get a chance in German uh, uh, to uh, walk out of the exam uh, because uh, uh, I still think uh, uh, two and a half hours is what you need to complete all the sections uh, mm -hmm. to a, a good standard. Because that battle against the clock, like it history, is, it's, it is, it's yeah. busy. I think it's a the busy German paper, paper you, you, uh, the good thing is you know what you're up against. I think you know exactly kind of what's coming up, but it's sure. quite a lot that you have to uh, uh, get through. Okay, and, so uh, good. In the written paper, it's the two reading comprehensions mm -hmm. that are coming up, uh, then uh, a grammar section, um, a, a short essay which is a response to one of the topics that is raised usually in the journalistic text. And finally, a, a longer written passage, which is still a letter in this day and age. <laughs> I know. Listen. I don't think we've gone to a blog or an we email gone yet, to but uh, yeah. <laughs> we okay. still write letters. But there's another option as well. Sorry. In terms of the reading comprehension, then, how do I start to answer that? And again, that worry that I'm not going to understand it, that it's going to be a mess of words in front of me. Yeah. Um, as I said, I would take a little bit of time looking through the paper at the beginning to familiarise myself with the things. Like you look at it, you, you see, oh, what's coming up in the grammar? Um, maybe what's the letter like? Start uh, the brain. Uh, Going. Uh, what topic is there in the journalistic text and then I would sit down 
Yeah, and then I think it's a play between reading the text but also reading the questions because the questions give you clues about the text. Half of them or even more than are in English. So if you read a question carefully, you've you, the might translation. Even, uh, yeah, yeah. you might even pick up, oh, what's this all about? Uh, you, can, you can guess about the main characters in the story, maybe even about some of the things that are happening. And then the lucky thing is that you have the line references. <laughs> in German. So you, you, each question has a, says Zeile 1 bis 8, which is a line reference, yeah. and then you know that you have to pick the information from that particular section. And Let's talk about that longer piece, because I think like Spanish as well, that's the bit that they worry about, that there's this kind of unstructured yeah. bit of writing. Talk to us about the longer written piece, the writing, the letter, the, letter, the essay, and I know the letter usually wins out. How am I preparing for that? Yeah, um, I t- try to uh, teach Uh, my students that it's really, really important to paragraph it very well uh, and to be clear because that assists the examiners in marking uh, because uh, it's graded on uh, content, which is 25 marks, and your language is another 25 marks. And the content is then based on really the points that you make in that letter in response to the questions in the letter. And there's usually five question clusters. Mm -hmm. uh, And uh, since COVID, you only have to respond to a minimum of four before you have to respond to all five. Um, Started off by referring to the question or by giving a reaction to the point so that the examiner knows, oh, this is paragraph one or uh, the student is responding to my questions on competitions. Uh, okay, so, uh, and you can just react to it. You don't have to repeat the question, but you could just say, oh, du machst einen Wettbewerb in Musik, klasse. And then I, I as the examiner, know it's, he's going to, the student is going to answer the questions on that section. And then I think, make sure you answer each question. Don't leave any uh, question out and give two, three well-formed question, uh, answers in good German to each of the questions. You make um, it sound so easy. Oh, no, no, it's but that's not. the problem. <laughs> well, it, it, it is, but I think it's really important, even if your language is not up to scratch. Yes. You, you know, you may be, you're lacking, but if you make your sentences and they are formed in such a manner that you can make a point, you will get your content mark. And that's important. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Then that last, just one question there uh, before we end there about the listening comprehension. So this yes. is after the written paper, the 10 minute break. How can you prepare for that? I mean, is it turning on German television and just immersing yourself? I, I don't know, but it is actually really important. I think sometimes listening is neglected uh, yeah. a little bit. I think we're so Because you always think, how do you do it? How can I prepare for it or something like that? Obviously, you can do the previous ones. Uh, uh, I use a lot of Deutsche Welle, DW, uh, in my class, and they have things like uh, uh, Nachrichten in simple German, you know, mm-hmm. einfache Nachrichten. You could use those uh, to listen to it uh, a little bit, but I would really recommend doing it. And you could prepare a little bit for some sections, for uh, vocabulary-wise, and I would do that as well, like the news sections there. Uh, most textbooks kind of give you summaries of, of some of the important vocabulary that over the years has come up, uh, you know, from, I don't know, volcanic eruptions to, uh, I don't know, break-ins or bank robberies or Cheerful other, uh, other uh, <laughs> things about health or statistics uh, about unemployment. Those It's big hard to topics. Pre- and the weather, of course. Yeah. So know your gewitter. Yeah. <laughs> We're Irish, we'd have known yeah. from that question. And t- Depressions Can, and highs. Hoch und tief. We're Sorry. about the highs. Can you end by wishing students luck in German, please? Uh, natürlich. Uh, ihr schafft das oder wir schaffen das, to quote Angela. Uh, und ich wünsche euch allen sehr viel Glück in der Prüfung. Deutsch ist klasse und uh, Kraftwerk ist sehr gut. Jetzt gehen wir <laughs> auf die Autobahn. <laughs> and it's always good to quote Angela Merkel, I find. Vielen yeah. Dank, Helmut oh. Sunderman from St. Killian's German School in Klonski in Dublin. That's our lot for this week and for this series of Study Hub. I want to thank you all for listening, downloading us, watching our social media and commenting. We hugely appreciate all our feedback. On a personal note, I want to thank all our marvellous teachers. Our RT Learn team colleagues are extraordinary. They've been brilliant. And then the team here, people like Tommy here today, who've been helping us out on the sound, uh, who've supported us so well. And finally, for me, I want to thank my producer, Kieran O'Byrne, who has just been a wonderful, wonderful person to work with on this series and really taken this programme and made something special out of it, I think. So my thanks to you all. But that is our lot for Study Hub. Good luck on the Leaving Cert.